Hello guys and gals, my name is Solfax and today we will be continuing our journey through the history and lore of the Witcher universe. Last week's episode closed out the Geralt of Rivia saga and moving forward I will be shifting my focus to a more broad concept of the Witcher lore, starting with the early history of the world and the conjunction of spheres. But before we start I just want to note that the history of the world in which the Witcher saga takes place is left deliberately vague by the author. The events of the past do not influence the characters or their actions in any significant ways. How and why the world came to be is of absolutely no concern to our heroes or the plot in general. And with that being said, I also need you to know that I will be taking some slight liberties when it comes to interpreting the little that has been written about these events. So taking that into consideration, let's move on. The creation of this world was captured in the songs of the druids. They claim the world began when the great acorn was first thrown up by the waves and from the acorn sprouted the great blobberis, the oldest of the oaks. From there the world grew and expanded, forming land masses and rising mountains and soon enough a large continent formed, surrounded by water on all sides, with mountains scarring its landscapes, mighty rivers meandering about and lakes peacefully resting. Next came the animals, flying, walking, crawling and digging underground. They covered the entirety of the land and the flow of time finally began. But that's just what the druids say and druids are known to consume all sorts of illusion again, so they're really not a trustworthy sort. Good times, Good times. How the world really began is a mystery, for there was no one to record it and the present occupants are too concerned about the future to worry about the distant past. However, there are some records of the early history of the world, mainly written by the dwarves, for they were the first to arrive to the continent. The manner in which they arrived is not documented, but when they started to settle in the mineral-rich Mahaka Mountains, it was obvious that they were not the first to occupy these lands. Unlikely as it is, the earliest race to colonize the continent were the gnomes. These humanoids that are today considered by some to be just another creature of fantasy were most likely the oldest sentient race to inhabit the continent. In which manner they arrived or if they just sprouted out from the rocks is unknown, but either way, when the dwarves arrived the gnomes took a liking to them. The two races discovered they share a knack for metalworking and smithing, so they claimed the Mahaka Mountains and Tir Toshar mountain ranges for themselves and over time built massive underground cities and tunnels which sprawled for miles. The dwarves and the gnomes ruled the center of the continent for a few hundred years in peace. None contested their dominion but the world is vast and another group of refugees took shore on the Pontar and Yurga river. The white ships of the Ain Said elves gleamed in the sun. The newcomers were so extremely physically different from the dwarves and the gnomes, they looked as if they came from another world entirely. Where the dwarves and the gnomes were short, sturdy built, the Ain Said were tall, slender like fir trees and had long beautiful hair and pointy ears. The encounter of these races is not well documented. There are few historical records that cover the topic and it could be that they lived in ignorance of each other for a few hundred years. Following their landing, the elves ventured south a short way and settled in the valley of Dol Blatana, where they built a beautiful city. The differences between these short races go even further. The dwarves and the gnomes were fond of rock and stone, carving tunnels and sheer cliffs to make homes for themselves. On the other hand, the elves lived in harmony with nature. Their houses were carefully grown by the trees they cared so much for and where the mountain races tore at the earth, Mother Earth bestowed gifts upon the elves. Following the founding of Dol Blatana, the elves sprawled across the continent in all directions, founding many cities and settlements on which future generations will build their own castles and keeps. For two millennia, these three races coexisted in relative harmony. The elves kept to themselves and tended to Mother Nature, and the dwarves and the gnomes stayed on the mountains, mining away and creating ever so complex mazes of tunnels. These three races, dwarves, gnomes and the end said elves, are so-called elder races. They are the ones who colonized this world first and claimed it for themselves. But all that is good doesn't last and this era of prosperity and peace had to eventually end. And oh boy, how did it end? 
This cataclysm that happened some 2000 years after the elves came to the continent is still talked about today. It has rocked the very foundation of the fragile ecosystem this world has created. This disaster came to be called the conjunction of spheres. What exactly happened is still argued by mages when they fall too deep in their cups, but the general consensus is that the fabric of two worlds collided, the world of the Witcher universe and another unknown world, creating portals that briefly connected these two worlds. From these portals unknown creatures came which the inhabitants of our world later called monsters, grouped them into subspecies and gave them names according to their behavior and appearance. If this explanation doesn't paint a pretty picture, I will allow the famous bard Dandelion himself to explain in layman's terms what happened during the conjunction of spheres. Scholars have many vices. Possibly the worst among them is a tendency to describe the simple in unnecessarily complex terms, to dress the plane in the grab of false learning. The conjunction of spheres might serve as an excellent example of this. This name, so mysterious to a common azir, could be replaced with a much simpler alternative. When the worlds collided. The phenomenon itself can also be explained in terms simple enough for a child to understand. Imagine, dear reader, that our world is a ship sailing on a great sea. From its deck we can see other, distant vessels, those are the stars. These vessels each bear their own goods and crew. Usually they pass us at some distance, barely visible specks, even when viewed through a spyglass. Once every few thousand years, however, a storm breaks out above this cosmic sea. A storm so strong it tosses the ships towards one another, making them sail check by joels. Part of the crew of one ship can at such times move to another and some of the cargo from one ship's hold can spill onto a neighboring vessel. When the waters calm, these ships separate once again and sail their separate, invariably different ways. The so-called host conjection beings, namely monsters such as ghouls and basilisks, are precisely such passengers from another vessel, and we humans are castaways, flung against our will from somewhere far away onto a world previously inhabited by the elder races. Once here we learn the arcane mysteries of magic unbeknown to us before. Could the worlds collide once more? Perhaps. Can this cataclysm be avoided, or the opposite, hastened? Some scholars believe that there are beings who have mastered this skill, possess rare genes which allow some to seize the helm of our vessel and steer us to safer waters, or to our doom. One of the myriad of so-called monsters that arrived to our world through the conjunction of spheres and the species that had the most profound impact on the long-standing ecosystem and ultimately reshaped the worlds were humans, our ancestors. Mages have only speculated how our native world looked, but judging from the fellow monsters that emerged from the portal alongside our ancestors, it is clear that we humans were not on top of the food chain. We were the prey and not the hunters. Other than our ancestor, the cataclysm introduced to our world countless of so-called monsters, ranging from horse-sized insects that spew corrosive acid, huge flying lizards that can lift an entire cow and breed fire, to smaller creatures with venomous bites who feast on the dead and incorporeal rays that stalk the night. Judging by the sheer variety present, these creatures must have thrived in their native lands, but in our world they are strangers. Their inhabitant has changed and their natural prey, whatever it was, was nowhere in sight. So following natural instinct, or perhaps just habit, the more aggressive species started to hunt humans and the elder races. It is difficult to say how the member of the elder races react to these carnivorous creatures that suddenly appeared and spread across the land. There are no records of battles or wars prior to the conjunction, but we can assume that they were somewhat familiar with the concept and started to combat these alien creatures. History bears witness to their success. The elder races survived and tried for centuries post the conjunctions. Dwarves with their armor and weapons and elves with their bows and arrows managed to keep their lands, fortify their domains and brave the constant onslaught of hostile monsters. Humans, on the other hand, were not so lucky. 
the two tribes that emerged from the portals, the Dauk and Vosgor people, once they regrouped, marched north and settled the lands of today's Kovir and Povis, just south of the Dragon Mountains. I'm risking starting to sound like a broken record, but not much is known about their early ancestors, their culture, their language, or even if any of the elder races ever tried to make contact and welcome them to their new world, all remains a mystery. The little we know about their way of life was discovered by a human mage Eltibal many centuries later. He managed to decipher the Dauk menhirs found in the Vosgor necropolis that prophesied a black sun will one day darken the sky, transforming 60 girls into demons who will usher the evil goddess Lilith and the end of times. This prophecy led to dozens of young girls born during a solar eclipse to be hunted down. Some were imprisoned, others were disposed of, and the less lucky ones were studied by mages in hopes of determining if there is any truth in the prophecy, often ending in post-mortem dissections and at least one vivisection. Furthermore, many of today's scholars attribute the widespread worship of Melitele to the Dauk and Vosgor people, speculating that their own simple religious cults sparked the global religion movement. Our early ancestors weren't great explorers. They settled in one general area, and if we were to believe modern archaeology, that's where they ended. Without reason or explanation, sometime after their arrival, the Dauk and Vosgur people just vanished, leaving only their crumpling settlements and eerie burial grounds. The exact cause of this abrupt disappearance is still argued about, but the likeliest culprit would be a destructive force that humans discovered upon arriving to our world. Whether it was by accident or design, one of our early ancestors learned how to harness the primordial chaos that resides within our world and how to use this vast energy source to perform all sorts of spells. Not all humans could harness this power, only a lucky few had the talent for extracting the sealed energy. Even today, mages are a rare breed and practicing spellcraft is dangerous. And in the same vein, it could have been that one of the early mages attempting to harness incredible power or making a complicated spell inadvertently caused the extinction of the early humans. But the end of the Dauk and Vosgor tribes didn't mark the end of humanity. More like it only ushered the idea that another sentient race looking for their own place of land is out there. And it's only a matter of time before we humans return and carve out our place in the world. And on that note, we are finishing up the first episode of Witcher World History. This episode, we tackled the early history of the world and the arrival of the races, including the humans. And in the next episode, we will be talking about the second reappearance of the human race. Until then, my name has been Solfax, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!